Marami pong salamat. Uh, habang tayo nakatayo at uh, tayo uh, buksan po natin sa team verse, Romans chapter 13. Uh, good morning everyone and thank God for this opportunity that uh, uh, we can be together. It's about time that I come back. No? Matagal ko na. Ngayon ko lang nakita yung bagong auditorium. Ako yung pinakamalapit. Ngayon ko lang nakita every conference kasi nasa PNG ako. Buti nilang iminob ni Pastor Philip Surulen yung kanilang uh, uh, conference uh, to next week. And I'm thankful for Pastor Bante for the opportunity to be here back in Metropolitan. Nawawala yata yung pulpit. Oh, ganito na yung pulpit dito, no? Ganito na, no? <laughs> okay, uh, let's just read verses 11 to 14. This will be our jumping board text, and then I'll look at another passage, and let's read this together. All together, verses 11, 12, 13, and 14 of Romans 13. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the last thereof. Let's pray. Our Father, we praise and thank you for this wonderful time. You have gathered us for a common purpose to be encouraged, to be stirred up in the pursuit of world evangelization. And Lord, we pray that you will just give us the right mindset, the, the heart that is willing to obey, to do what you commanded us to do and be passionate in doing so. Lord, we pray that you will just uh, work in our hearts, in our midst, and Lord, use your servant that your word will be preached with clarity, with power, with love. Always your name be lifted up and magnified and honored. Lord, we commit this conference to you. Thank you for the leadership of Pastor Benny Abante. And we pray that you will just continue to use Metropolitan Bible Baptist Church, encouraging other pastors, churches, in the pursuit of world missions. Thank you for this privilege to be here. And Lord, we pray that uh, you will continue to work. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated, please. Well, uh, it's good to be here. I saw a lot of partners in different uh, churches, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. I was looking at a pastor from Marawi, but uh, wala yata dito. But I'm thankful how the Lord has brought us together for a common purpose to be exhorted and encouraged in the pursuit of uh, the main thing. And that main thing is uh, reaching the lost world with the gospel. That is uh, the way to glorify the Lord. Our God has given us the, remi the reminder that uh, the chief end of man is to glorify God. Of course, Revelation 4.11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. And we are here to glorify God in whatever we say, think, or do. And I'm thankful for the partners that uh, are uh, involved, especially in uh, uh, holding the rope for missionaries. We have a good number of missionaries that are here with us missionaries to the foreign fields, missionaries to the local fields. And I appreciate your uh, partnership, not only with Bethany, but many churches here in the Philippines. We continue to, uh, to be passionate about this partnership and expand this partnership and strengthen this partnership for world evangelization. This is not just something that we talk about. It is something that we have to uh, do. Okay? It's one thing to talk. It's one thing to confer. It's one thing to have conferences, you render, you attend all the conferences, you have accumulated many folders, many bags, many t-shirts, and then after that, what? No? So, there must be an action after this conference. And I would like to believe that this is another way for us to be stirred up in our hearts. I'm thankful that uh, uh, my friend from Sagay is here, no? Dr. Jose Ruiz, the good friend of Pastor Rebaton. <laughs> And uh, I'm thankful that uh, we can uh, laugh at each other and uh, rejoice and uh, be reminded of the main thing. We'll be talking about uh, it's about time that uh, we reignite our continuing ministry commitment. It's about time that uh, we put back the, 
uh, the alab dun sa ating ministry commitment. And uh, we have seen here in uh, Romans uh, uh, 13, 11 to 14, the need for us to wake up. And sometimes there are sleeping giants uh, that uh, we need to be slapped on our face, so to speak, and wake up to what is really important, what really matters most. And this is what we will be looking at this morning. And uh, of course, when you look at other passages in the scriptures, you will find in Acts 14.22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them that they continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul and Silas, uh, after their first missionary journey, uh, of course, they went back and confirmed the uh, uh, the faith of the apostles, they encourage them to continue. There are tendencies at times that we uh, tend to what? We tend to discontinue. We tend to stop. Okay? I was in the devotion early morning with a staff either in our, our school educational ministries. And we thank God for the continuation of the educational ministries there in Bethany. The Baptist Bible College, it was started in 1964 since the time of Pastor Art Sim. No, 1964 is continuing on its 54th, 54th year. The Bible College uh, was started out of a need for men and women to be trained for effective service in the ministry. And then we have the Academy 1980 moving to its 37, 38th year. And then we have also the Liberal Arts College moving to its... Uh, uh, 19th year by the grace of God. And folks, uh, we always remind our staff to continue. Of course, we start with God, in the beginning God. And uh, we have to continue because he who hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are many passages that reminds us the, of the need to keep on keeping on. We have been into this task for many years since uh, missionaries from America came. And we are thankful. We are recipients of the gospel, the good news of salvation, Pastor Ovelia. We are thankful that it's not only in the bow. It's not only the spokesman of Pastor of President Duterte who is here, no? It's, uh, <laughs> it's for all of us. You see, Colossians 1.23, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not move away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made the minister. And not only Paul, but all of us here. God has given us that ministry, and we have to continue. In 2 Timothy 3.14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Continue thou. In, in, in James 1.25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Folks, we need to continue. And let me tell you that the Bible also exhorts us in Hebrews 13.1, let brotherly love continue. Iba? Minsan dito tayo nagkikita yung mga hindi nag-uusap, nagkikita sa conference, no? Pagkatapos nag-uusap, pagkatapos ng conference, hindi na naman nag-uusap. <laughs> Let brotherly love continue. Okay? We are serving the same king, Lord of Lords. But uh, you see, it is incumbent upon us that we renew our continuing ministry commitment. It's about time. It's about time that we forget our differences and move on to what really matters most and continuing our uh, ministry commitment. Oh, we know that the church will continue because the Lord Jesus Christ has promised continuity in the church, perpetuity. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou art Peter, but upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It is the Lord's church. It's not the church of the people. It's not the church of the community. It's the Lord's church. And we have to get back into the word of God and follow what the Lord designed for the church to be. The church will continue. Oh, there are some things we should never discontinue. And the mission of the church, we continue with passion, with vigor, with, uh, uh, you know, with renewed vision, partnership. Oh, there are some things we should discontinue. There are things that we should not discontinue, but there are some things that we should discontinue. 
Maaring mga, uh, yung mga bitterness in our soul or uh, having some problems with another brother of like faith and practice, we have to discontinue on that and get things right. Folks, uh, the Bible tells us here in Romans chapter uh, uh, 11, 13 in verse 11, uh, verse 12, the night is far spent, the day is at 10. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly. Let us put off, put off the, it says here, let us cast off the works of darkness. This continue on things that uh, would hinder the smooth flow of the gospel. Oh, there are things that we must continue intentionally. And this is the reason why MBBZ has this Ancho Conference, World Missions Conference, the counterpart for many, many years. And we are encouraged to continue intentionally. It's about time that we reignite, palamin uli natin ang ating commitment, a continuing ministry commitment. First, we need to be committed to biblical outreach. Let us be committed to biblical outreach. Oh, we must have compassionate commitment. Nandun po dapat talaga yung pag-ibig. This is basic to many of us. And we just have to go back to the basic. I still remember Pastor Woosley would be telling us, if you still remember Pastor Artsim, he would always be telling the Bible College students, you have to be a theologian to miss the point. No? Sometimes we have learn a lot of things that uh, we do not know already. We do not know anymore what is basic. Basic. It's to glorify God, to fulfill the great commission. Folks, we need to have a... to continue our biblical outreach. This is indeed basic. We must have compassionate commitment. Oh, the Bible tells us in Matthew 9.36, the Lord Jesus Christ, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad a sheep having no shepherd we need to have that commitment to have that compassion as the lord jesus christ we must pray we must preach and model as all winners compassion i, re I read of this uh 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 his story in 1879 in the tourist english criminal charles peace was sentenced to be executed he had killed at least two men and committed a number of burglaries in wealthy neighborhoods in and around London. A large reward was offered for his capture. He was eventually arrested while robbing a house and convicted after a sensational trial that the entire city uh, they were focused on. They followed through how this, uh, this man, Charles Peace, was uh, tried and convicted. On the morning of his execution, you know, peace was visited by a clergyman. And this clergyman uh, uh, came, minsan, doon na lang, pupunta yung uh, spiritual person, no? And uh, Charles Peace expressed his annoyance that the church had shown little interest in people like him. Little interest in people like this uh, person who has been killing, robbing, Peace said, Sir, if I believe what you and the Church of God say that you believe, even if England were covered with broken glass from coast to coast, I would walk over it, if need be, on hands and knees, and think it worthwhile living just to save one soul from an eternal hell like that. Folks, you can see, we have what the people needs. That's why we have also, are you Reformers Unanimous Recovery Ministry? And that is very relevant at this present time as many are addicted. We have what they need and we have the hope that they need. It's, the only, it's only the Lord that can provide them that relief. Okay? And folks, uh, it is, this is a true story. And there is a real eternity uh, in either heaven or hell awaiting every person born into this world. And God has tasked his children, all of us, especially spiritual leaders with the responsibility to proclaim the gospel, the only hope of heaven to those around us. Yet, yet, it is clear that for many churches and many Christians, reaching the Lord, the loss is just a what? Is barely an afterthought, not a passionate commitment. Parang, 
Parang naisip lang natin yan. O na pag-usapan sa conference. But it is not really a passionate commitment. That, that the test of our love for the laws and our love for God is not found in what we say, but in what we do. Are we taking the task of sharing the gospel seriously? We need to have compassionate commitment. We need a renewed or reignited sense of urgency when it comes to reaching the lost with the gospel. It's about time. In fact, we are already late. It has to be last year or the year before. It has to be yesterday. But it's better late than never. It's about time that we reignite our passion for souls. It's about time but that we reignite our continuing ministry commitment and we need to be committed to biblical outreach. Folks, we need to be committed to biblical outreach. How is our church outreach? Do we have compassionate commitment? Oh, the bringing of one soul to Christ according to George Truett is the highest achievement possible to human life. The bringing of one soul to Christ. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own? The Bible tells us, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Oh, we need to have compassionate commitment. We need to have comprehensive commitment. Oh, the Bible tells us in Acts 20, 20, the Apostle Paul would testify how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Comprehensive commitment, everything. God has entrusted to us everything and we are to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. We need to have comprehensive commitment. Oh, evangelism, event evangelism, witnessing as the Holy Spirit leads you. It's not only during times of uh, conference that we are perked up. It should be day by day. Preaching the gospel even every Sunday when we, when we are in our church, you can never tell that uh, there are some people there Maaring member, pero hindi pa saved. Okay? They are in the church role, but when the role is called up yonder, it's sad, they are not there. Oh, we have uh, websites already available. Oh, uh, comprehensive commitment. Oh, we thank God for world evangelization, Jewish emphasis, Jewish missions. It should be Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. It has to take the world. It's not only our local missions, but likewise our foreign missions, Samaria, those that are despised, ignored, neglected, no? or sometimes rejected, forgotten, neglected, despised, fields, Samaria. I know that there are, in your churches, uh, ministry to the to the deaf, ministry to the prisons. This need to have, we need to have a comprehensive commitment because people need the Lord. Amen. We have been always uh, reminded of uh, what is uh, prevalent at this time. Uh, nakikita natin yung mga uh, nangyayari sa ating lipunan regarding killings of uh, these uh, drug addicted people. But uh, sometimes we just are fun of criticizing what is going on, but are we doing our part? Yeah. The ministry of the first, first, Corinthians, uh, first Timothy chapter 2. First of all, uh, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Folks, this is acceptable. And uh, this is good for, for our God. Uh, for, the, for our Lord Jesus Christ who would have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. God wants us to awake and see what is going on in our country, in our society. We are in this time for a purpose and uh, our commitment has to be compassionate and comprehensive. See, um, you know, ministry is to serve or aid as a Christian leader in Acts 20, 24, the Apostle Paul would say, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. That is our ministry which we have received of the Lord. I do not know if you have received that ministry. You are a spiritual leader. You are a person called of God to reach out the lost world with the gospel. And what a privilege that is. 
Curtis Hudson would say the only alternative to soul winning is disobedience. It's true. The only alternative to soul winning is disobedience. We need to have scheduled soul winning meetings. We have to enlist soul winners. We have to train soul winners. We continue on, folks, in having a commitment to biblical outreach. In 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We train the next generation's leaders, future leaders. The Bible is very clear in 1 Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We are to be ready always. We should know what we believe and why we believe, what we believe, what we stand for. There are many opportunities around us and we need to seize these opportunities and steward properly these opportunities. Oh, thank God for the opportunity to reach out many schools, our community through the schools. We're just, we had our parenting seminar yesterday at Margarita Rojas de Ayala here just nearby. Uh, in Francisco Street. Yesterday, there were 125 parents. It is in conjunction with the foundation day of that elementary school. We had our parenting seminar before here in Santa Ana Elementary School. We, are, we have adopted uh, how many schools already? And the opportunities are tremendous. The fields are ripe unto harvest. The laborers are few. Sometimes we just talk of that. And after that, we are excited, we are excited, but we do nothing. Folks, we have to reignite our commitment to biblical outreach. It's about time. In fact, we are already late. Almost all the schools in Makati we have adopted, and we are now moving to our 10th year in values instruction class ministry. We encourage others and do what is best, share the materials or help them uh, be uh, uh, conducting seminars to teach those volunteers. This coming Saturday, we'll have DIC Convergence uh, there in Bethany from 9 to 12 to encourage those that are reaching the schools. Of course, we have already a good number of volunteers, but we need more. 250 is not enough. 300 is not enough. Reaching how many schools? 70 schools. Almost all the schools in Makati. The last one is Benigno Aquino. They're in District 2. And how many schools in Pasay? 85% of the schools. And four schools here in Manila that are nearby. Rafael Palma, Santa Ana, Margarita, no? Rojas, De Ayala, and even Villamor. They're in Pasig Line. Folks, the harvest truly really is plenteous, but the laborers are few. We need to have compassion. We need to have that comprehensive commitment. And folks, we need to have a creative commitment. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be creative. As long as it doesn't violate the scripture or, or, or uh, it uh, violates uh, scripture or what? No, our... Uh, 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 <clears throat> it uh, affects our uh, sense of, uh, oh, that is not uh, right. Uh, uh, we, we have the latitude of doing things that uh, are uh, created. Uh, just like uh, w what you see in the record in Mark 2, 3 to 5, when they come unto him, bringing one sick of the falsy, which was born of four, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof. Where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the falsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the falsy son, Thy sins be forgiven thee. As long as it doesn't violate the scriptures or corrupt good morals, I believe we have the, uh, the latitude of uh, adopting this. Creative ways of ministry. We need to have compassionate commitment, comprehensive commitment, creative commitment. Oh, we need to be committed to our biblical outreach. It's about time. Yeah. The Lord has impressed upon you to reach your community with some creative ways. We have started our mana ministry, feeding those small nourish. They call that wasted or severely wasted children. 
And these are schools that are situated in depressed areas, just like Ed says, Papayan de Los Santos Elementary School, they're in Tramo. And eventually, we will adopt another school in Juan Sumulong Elementary School there in Emi de la Cruz. A lot of wasted children. Hindi naman patapon. Wasted. Tinanong ko sa principal, bakit wasted ang tawag nyo? Malnourish po yun. Mas mahirap ang pangalan na wasted. Parang patapon na yan. Malnourish. You look at the dictionary, you look at malnourish, and there is a synonym for wasted. And they are the ones who determine all of this. Uh, in EDSES, there are some... 85 children. And as you minister to them, you demonstrate God's love. And you see, the parents are aware. And it would be very effective in declaring God's truth. It's just like medical dental mission. You know, even the unsaved can do that. Medical dental mission. But when we do medical dental mission clinic, oh, we are putting ourselves in position of strength. And it is easier for us to declare God's truth. Creative ways of doing ministry in reaching the lost world with the gospel. God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has given us the sound mind. And folks, we have been in the ministry for so long. Some of you are already in the ministry since the time of Moses. <laughs> I'm just new. I just completed my 17th year as pastor of Bethany. I'm moving to my 18th year. Parang kahapon lamang drama television. No, But it's only by the grace of God we continue to learn and learn from each other. Iron sharpen at iron. And then, what else? I need to be quick because I have seven points. The second is we need to be committed to biblical formation. Formation. Oh, we, we must know the provision. And what is that provision? The Bible tells us, Romans 5, 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the Lord Jesus Christ in us, the Spirit of God in us. The pattern in Galatians 4, 19, My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. It is God's desire that we put on Christ. Christ be formed in us. Folks, it's about time that we put on Christ, put on Put, put off the works of the flesh. And this is not any more new to, to all of us, I believe. John Stott says the church needs people who, in listening to their pastor, listen to the message of Christ, and pastors who, laboring in laboring among the people, look for the image of Christ. The Bible is telling us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, Philippians 2, 5 to 8. We have the, the pattern, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to have that biblical formation. Our goal is Christ. Our goal is Christ-likeness. And we, when we have that Christ-likeness, it will not be difficult for us to pursue world evangelization. It's about time that we be committed to biblical formation. And what is the process? The process is preaching, modeling. The Bible is very clear here. All the scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, mature, truly furnished unto all good works. We have the word of God. And the ministry that is effective is built on the word of God. This is the process of biblical formation, the word of God. All the scripture is given by inspiration of God. Is profitable for doctrine, what is right. For reproof, what is not right. For correction, how to get it right. For instruction, how to keep it right. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. In chapter 4, in verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word. Ang pinipreach man natin ay salita ng Diyos. 
There in our pulpit, we have that, that uh, a verse that I may see Jesus. Uh, Jesus preach the word, the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, preaching is the process where we, wherein we can have biblical formation. Are you still preaching? They cease not to teach and preach the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 5, in verse 42, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. What will stop you from preaching? We need to be models. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Models. We are to be models. In 2 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2, Paul says, Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I had delivered them to you. Be followers of me as I am of the Lord Jesus Christ. It would be difficult for us to tell to the, to the brethren, Be followers of me, when we are not following the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, that is what the Bible is telling us here in Romans 13. It's about time that we awake out of our sleep and we are to uh, put off, cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly. Biblical formation. Charles Spurgeon would say, a man's life is always more forcible than his speech. When men take Stacked of him, they reckon his deeds as dollars and his words as pennies. If his life and doctrine disagree, the mass onlookers accept his practice and reject his preaching. Models, your action is speak so loud they cannot hear what you say. Oh, discipleship, 2 Timothy 1, 13 to 14. This is another process. We, we preach, we model, we be good examples. And then we disciple, hold fast. 2 Timothy 1, 13 to 14, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Oh, there is a saying here, when we mentor, we see church members as our ministry. When we manage, we see them as our machine. And we will be accused of manipulation. We are to be leaders. We are to be pastors, poimen, under shepherd. And it refers to the pastor's direction. Sometimes we have the tendency to own oh, He's bishop, I'm still a pastor. And then later on, he will become archbishop. And later on, he will become a cardinal. And then we will have the Baptist Pope. <laughs> Folks, that, that is not in the Bible. There's no hierarchy. We have designations of the pastors. And let me tell you, the pastor is a bishop, an overseer. And it refers to the pastor's duty to oversee episcopos on top, episcopeo, to watch. You are a bishop as well as others. Though you do not behave like a bishop, we are all bishops. We are pastors. We are preachers. Kerugio. And it refers to the pastor's declaration. Preach, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Be fascinate. And we are to be teachers, teacher. Of course, we know it's, it refers to the pastor's discipling on the daskalion. Oh, we are also elders, presbyteros. It refers to the pastor's dignity. Presbyteros, mature. Folks, you see, we are to be committed to biblical formation and the provision is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Christ in us. The pattern is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The process we are to preach, we are to model, we are to disciple. The product, until Christ be formed in you to make into the same likeness for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed unto the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8, 29. 
It's God's desire that we be Christ-like. When people look at us, they may not read, have read the Bible, but they are the only, you are the only Bible that they read. You have heard of that, the Bible according to you. And what kind of what translation is it in our lives? Sometimes we, we quarrel about the, the versions in the Bible that we do not understand what is the difference between inspiration, revelation, inspiration, preservation, illumination, translation, canonization. Revelation is God revealing His Word. Inspiration is God breathed His Word. Preservation, God keeping His Word. Wherever they, they word, O Lord, is settled in heaven. Illumination, God clarifies His Word. And translation, God renders His Word into the language that can be understood. It's sad when you hear of people who would be uh, invading the church with their doctrine. Uh, these Rachmanites. I have to tell that. It's sometimes, oh, if you will not be saved using the, you can only be saved using the King James Version of the Bible. Where did you get that? How about those people who live before the 1611? Stay in the Word. Until Christ be forming you, that is the product formed to make into the same likeness. Folks, we need to be committed to biblical outreach. It's high time. It's about time that we reignite our continuing ministry commitment. Commitment to biblical outreach. Commitment to biblical formation. And commitment to biblical succession. It's only as we develop others around us that we permanently succeed. I'll not be forever pastor of Bethany. I'm already 61, moving to 62, though I do not look like it. <laughs> Senior citizen, I said, Pastor, oh. But we will not forever be here. We will not be forever in Sagai. We will not be forever where we, the Lord has called us. We need to have that commitment to biblical succession. And it is only as we develop others around us that we permanently succeed. We need to teach emerging leaders. There are emerging leaders in the congregation and we have to mentor them, identify them. The systems we use are not as important as the people we choose. In Acts 6.3, the Bible tells us, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of Annas report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Men that are filled with the Holy Ghost is spirit-filled. We need to identify, we need to mentor, but I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians 2, 19 to 20, to send Timothy shortly unto you, and that I also may be of good comfort when I know your estate, for I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your estate. Men that are like-minded. Identify these people, mentor them, and the, the Lord is revealing them to you. Biblical succession. Involve them in the ministry so that they will understand. There's a saying here, if the dominant theme of your church is controlling others rather than serving others, the likeness of developing strong leaders around you will diminish. It is to uh, serve others. And then we evaluate how are they doing. Oh, we have to walk around management by walking around, so to speak. And you look, see, I stop when he, he's doing good. Commend him. If he is not doing the right thing, you have to correct him in love. We need to be committed to biblical succession. Teach emerging leaders. Train a godly staff. Oh, you have a staff, we have to train them. And the only thing you know worse than training a staff, member that leads for another church is not to train them at all and they stay. Minsan nagtataka kayo eh, ayaw ko na mag-train dahil aalis naman yan pagka natapos kong may-train eh. Pero mas worse yung hindi mo tinetrain pero nag-stay. Hello? We have to cultivate a spirit of faith. Help people reach their full potential, catch them doing right. Huwag tayong ma- Tret-treten, antagonize, baka, baka mamaya, nandun na yung loyalty sa kanya, no? Cool debate, a basis of understanding. 
In Titus 1, 5 to 10, the Bible tells us, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I have appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having a faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just holy, temperate, holding fast. The faithful word as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers especially the day of the circumcision. Folks, we need to be committed to biblical succession. Train godly staff. Teach emerging leaders. And, you know, we have to be aware that there is uh, there is a, a, a harmony. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? 1 Corinthians 14.8. Committed to biblical succession. And not only that, it's about time that we also be committed, we reignite our commitment to biblical integrity. Integrity. Those of you who have studied, of course, all of us studied math. When we speak of integer, it's a whole number. It is not fraction. It is whole upright. Integrity. And we must mentor from a platform of respect. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor than silver and gold. Proverbs 22, 1. We need to mentor from a platform of respect platform this platform is built by character and not credentials i reminded our graduating students if you will be asked to choose between title and testimony you go for testimony testimony better than title sandami mo ng title kung ano ano nakalagay diyan sa sa pangalan mo pero how is your testimony Kahit ang dami mo mga title, you are LLB, no? BA Ministry, LBM, whatever, title, nandiyan lahat. Pero if you do not have the testimony that back up the title, wala. Integrity. And David said unto Nathan in 2 Samuel 12, 13 to 14, I have seen, I have seen against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die, howbeit because they did. This deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child that is born unto thee. The, 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 the child that is born unto thee shall surely die. We need to have personal integrity. And that is what you can see here in Romans 13. Cast off the works of darkness. Put on the armor of light. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about time. In 1 Timothy 4.16, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Titus 1.6, If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot, are unruly. Integrity, personal integrity. We need to have a time alone with God. And sometimes... We are guilty of not having this intimacy with the Lord. Involve ourselves with, with sharpening relationships. Iron sharpened iron. We need to each other. We have to listen even to our wives and children. Happy wife, happy lives. Listen. Maybe the Lord is speaking through them. Folks, personal integrity. How is our home? We need to have this reignited commitment to biblical integrity. Personal integrity and doctrinal integrity. The Bible tells us in Titus 2.1, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Again in 1 Corinthians 14, 8, For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? 
David Wells, one of the authors of Shapeless Christianity, ready to adapt to any worldview may enjoy initial success, but it will soon be overtaken and lose its interest. The problem with all such adaptation is that those outside the faith soon see that they can reap Christian benefits on purely secular grounds without paying whatever small price is being asked for the adapted version of this faith. Let's stay in the word doctrinal integrity. Do not swerve. Folks, we have the tendency at times to uh, get engaged with internet theology that we do not know that we are already swerving away. And there are people who are not anymore believing in tithing or these basics. Be very careful. This ought you to have done and not to leave the others undone. Doctrinal integrity. It has to be based on the Word of God. And likewise, we need to have financial integrity. Can you be trusted with funds, with money? The Bible tells us, let not then your good be evilly spoken of. It's sad when you hear of missionaries who resign because of financial integrity. Financial integrity. How is our personal integrity, doctrinal integrity, financial integrity? Folks, it's, it's about time that we reignite our commitment to biblical integrity. And then, number five, we have to have that commitment to biblical sacrifice. Oh, sacrifice. You know that continuing churches are churches that keep sacrificing after the startup period. Hindi lang sa umpisa, continue. That comes when memories of the past supersede the visions of the future. Let us continue. Let us not stay in that, uh, what is that, uh, plateau. The Apostle Paul would say, but not, uh, he, he would say, I count not myself to have apprehended. I have not arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things that are before, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us continue to sacrifice. Let's continue to Continue on in, we have to sacrifice even the status quo. And David said, what have I now done? First Samuel 17, 29. Is there not a cause? Sometimes we just say, oh, okay na ako dito, status quo, comfort zone. And we do not anymore explore the many possibilities, creative ways in the ministry. You know, to today's churches, as one would say, they are either risk-taking, caretaking, or undertaking. Which one are you? Are you risk-taking, caretaking, or undertaking? Ay, pag nag risk tayo, may faith talaga doon. Faith. We step out in faith because the Lord has given us that, that command, that direction. We may not know what will happen, but God knows. We have to sacrifice the status quo. We have to sacrifice the acceptance of this world. No man that warrant, 2 Timothy 2, 4, no man that warrant entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Sacrifice the acceptance of this world. If I will be doing this, I might lose my friends. Uh, they would not accept me anymore. But folks, we need to sacrifice for the cause of Christ. We are to sacrifice the philosophy of this world. You know, during the time the early church were counter, the early church was countercultural, not conforming to the culture. Beware, Colossians 2.8, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Beware. We are to sacrifice the philosophy of this world. We have a different philosophy. The word. We are to be different for us to make a difference. We are to sacrifice the resources of this world. And that is scriptural giving. Unites our hearts to, to the Lord. The Bible tells us in Luke 12, 34, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Scriptural giving is an evidence of God's grace at work in our lives. Sacrifice the resources of this world. 
2 Corinthians 8, 7, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also, the grace of giving. Sometimes we are wondering if we will support all these missionaries, what will happen to our ministry. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. You just look at the experience of churches who have continued to do what the Lord has commanded them to do. I'm thankful for these missionaries who are in the foreign field. Sometimes we might be uh, jealous about them. They have uh, good support or they have this uh, clearing house. When folks, when you look at their uh, specific situations, oh, you will understand much better Karaniwan may mga problema yun sa visa, sa mga family na, sa mag-aaral yung kanilang anak, nandun sila, minsan nakahiwala yung kanilang anak sa kanila. They go through sometimes home study, home schooling, and we are thankful how they continue on. They have to sacrifice, sacrifice the resources of this world. Scriptural giving also facilitates ministry. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound. I'm thankful for the missionaries that are here. I'd like to request all the missionaries in the foreign fields, could you please stand? We have missionary Silverio this year too, who have forsaken Bangladesh and is now going to New Zealand. It's a difficult field, missionary Peter Ion, there, going back to that intermission from the Lord from Singapore to Indonesia and Singapore and Indonesia. And then we have John Coronel who has had his intermission and has assisted the Army Gisalva Foundation after Ethiopia. Now he's going to San Sibar. And then we have missionary Elias Bangkale now in Ethiopia for five years celebrating their ministry this September fifth year. Thank God for these missionaries. How many are there in the clearinghouse? Thank you very much. 134. And we have many more on deck. And folks, the more that we need to sacrifice. Matasalamat tayo. Maraming tinatawag ang Panginoon. Tapos maraming umiikot. Tatawag sa atin. It's a blessing. It's not a burden. And sometimes you call us up. Pastor, may missionary ba kayo dyan? Pwede mong magpadala kayo dito dahil wala ako sa linggo. Paano sila magpipreach? So sige, sige. No? We have a good number of prophets chambered there. Sacrifice the resources of this world. We need to have that commitment to biblical sacrifice. We have a lot of manpower that has been in the field. A good number of my drivers are already missionaries, pastoring. Sometimes you might be, oh, pagka umalis yan, paano na kami dito? The Lord will replenish. The Lord will give back sometimes double. Let us not limit the Holy One of Israel. Folks, we are talking about it's about time. Minsan, iniisip natin yung sarili lang natin. Hindi natin nakikita yung kailangan ng mundo para si Kristo ay maipahayag ng maliwanag. All you can see in Haggai, in Haggai chapter 1, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house my ways? Now therefore, it says here, that saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And that he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Folks, we need to be committed to biblical sacrifice. I have two more. I do not know if that clock is right. Ganon. 9.57, pero 9.45 lang sa akin. 9.44. We are to be committed to biblical partnership. It's about time to strengthen our partnership, to expand our partnership. I'll be in this afternoon going to Iba Zambales and we'll be meeting Southern Baptist pastors. We were invited along with Brother Ken and uh, this is Global Missionary Clearing House. Oh. Uh, 
You may say, oh, they might be competing with us. No. We need to strengthen partnership of like faith and practice like focus. You know, uh, it's about time that we, we forget these uh, little differences. Uh, we need partnership. No one church can do it alone. God will enable us to partner together. In Philippians 1.27, you know that very well. Stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. He's striving together. Let us then strive together for the faith of the gospel. And praise God for what He will do through a people who unite around His truth and invest their energy in preaching the gospel. Folks, if there was ever a time that Christian and local churches needed to strive together for the faith of the gospel, it is now. It's about time to strive together for the faith of the gospel. This is not the time for independent Baptists to divide and splinter. It is the time to reach out and turn the world upside down once again. Amen. I have been singing this song for many years, but there are still those who would not. This is the way to blessing. And folks, what would happen? What could happen if each of us would participate with one another for the cause of world evangelism? What would happen if we embraced biblical separation but discarded isolation? We should not isolate. Yes, we have to be insulated. We are to be separated from the world to the Lord. What if we embrace propagation of the gospel but discard polarization around personalities, institutions, or petty issues. We are on the same team. We are on the winning team. Instead of arguing about Bible versions or variances in the style of worship, why don't we just put our heart and soul into a common win, reaching the lost souls? Well, we need to have that passionate commitment to biblical partnership. We are in this together. They are reaching the loss. Partner with them. They know, we know of them. We have these four who are here. I think we have many more coming. And there are those of you who are called by the Lord. Maybe you transition eventually to foreign missions as you have a clear signal from the Lord. It's not uso uso. If the Lord wants you to be in that local mission, continue. We need to have that commitment to biblical partnership. And finally, we need to have a renewed, re reignited commitment to biblical perseverance. Tayo'y magpatuloy. Persevere. Perseverance. The Bible tells us Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Philippians 3, 4, 13, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Ministry of pastoring, discipling, mentoring is not a sprint. It is a marathon. As one author would say, we are not making popcorns. We are engaged in building people. And there are no shortcuts to building lives. Minsan na, na, na di discouraged na kayo, parang pasaway pa rin, ang dami na. When you look at the Lord Jesus Christ, He has mentored the twelve, isa ay Judas. And you should be looking at the perfect sermon of the Lord Jesus Christ, perfect example, pero may mga lumalabas pa rin ang mga, mga wala sa hulog. Do not be discouraged. Just persevere. If God has called us to the ministry, there can be no looking back. The Bible tells us in Luke 9.62, no man having put his hand to the flow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Rest in the promises of God. Faithful will see that call it you. Who also will do it? And being confident of this very thing that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me tell you that the road of ministry is not all interstate. May mga traffic nga tayo na dadaanan. May mga problema. But just continue on. Having that faith in God and willing to persevere even through 
Fear. Natatakot kayo minsan. Pupunta kayo doon sa field. Natatakot. Hindi nyo alam na yung makakakilala ba ako dito? Please pray for missionary Ed Pamintuan. He is in Armenia this time. And thank God for the partners there in Armenia, just below Russia. He was not allowed to enter for three months in Israel dahil galing siya sa Dubai. Oh. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Look, William Carey said of his biographer, if he gives me credit, if he gives me credit for being a plotter, he will describe me justly. Anything beyond that will be too much. I can plot, I can persevere in any definite pursuit. To this, I owe everything. We need to press on. We need biblical perseverance. Kailangan natin magpatuloy kahit na may bumabagsak. We persevere even through failure. You learn from your failure and then get up and get going. We persevere even through favor. Wag po tayo, oh, marami ng mga naging success, don't, don't just fall down. Uh, you, you have to understand even Joseph, perfect type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, he persevered even though he was favored by the Lord. There were occasions that he was tempted to want to sin, but he continued to do what is right. Folks, we need to be persevere. And when the curtain is uh, what put down, we can be just like Nehemiah in Nehemiah 13, 33. Lord, remember me for good. For good, not for bad. It's about time, folks, that we reignite, reignite our continuing bib ministry commitment. We have to be committed to biblical outreach, compassionate, comprehensive, creative commitment. We need to be committed to biblical formation until Christ be formed in you. God's desire for us is to be Christ-like. We need to be committed to biblical succession, teach emerging leaders, train godly staff. We will not be forever here. We need to be committed to biblical integrity. How is our personal, doctrinal, financial integrity? We need to be committed to biblical sacrifice. Are we sacrificing the status quo? Are we sacrificing the, the acceptance of this world, the philosophy of this world? Are we sacrificing the resources of this world for eternal gains? We need to be committed to biblical partnership. We are in this together. Let us partner together. Together we can. Together we must. Together we will. Paigtingin po natin. Reignite our commitment to biblical partnership. And let us be committed to biblical perseverance. Press on. Keep on keeping on. Just like Nehemiah, though the oppositions, obstacles come, criticisms come, just continue on. Pray and watch and keep on keeping on. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Our Father, we praise and thank you for your word. Help us to truly recognize your goodness in our lives, the opportunities that you have sent our, our way, and help us to seize and steward these opportunities. Lord, we know that it's about time that we awake out of our sleep and seize the many opportunities that you send our way to steward the gospel, to steward the truth, and faithfully do so by your enabling grace. Thank you, Father, for this conference. Thank you for Pastor Abante and for MBBC, how MBBE, for how they have toiled, sacrificed for this conference. Thank you for these pastors. Continue to speak to our hearts in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, folks.